this is not a regular video about bevels in Blender or Blender modifier. They'll be boring. Now, what I want to do here is show you how to bevel for hard surface, why you should bevel this way or another, and also show you some really cool tips and tricks for beveling in Blender. Okay, let's go. First, let's talk about why do we need bevels in the first place, and then we're going to be talking about what kind of bevels we should be using and when. And then I'm going to show you some really awesome tips and tricks with bevels. Now, before we begin, let me say that if you just started learning Blender or you're an intermediate user and you still have some stuff you don't understand, I have a fantastic deal for you, okay? It's really important that you learn from a really well-structured content because it's going to save you a ton of time and give you precisely the information you need and nothing else, okay? And we have a really good offer for you. It's called Hard Surface Accelerator Course. And if you click on the link in the video description right now, you're going to get 40% off the deal. This course helped thousands of students, and I mean it literally. And we have tons of testimonials. It's a very robust course, going to give you an insight on the basics of Blender, on how to model hard surface how to render, how to post-process, but also a lot of insight on design, how to come up with better details, better blockouts. So it's going to give you a lot of really, really valid info that's going to help you tremendously grow very fast. Okay, so go ahead, click the link in the video description, and I hope to see you inside. Now, going back to bevels. Bevels are essential. Anything that you see in the real world has a bevel, even knife's edge, okay? Doesn't matter how thin it is, it has a bevel. Why? There are no infinitely sharp things in, in, in real life. And in Blender, if you look at a cube, for example, and I'm gonna remove the cavity with the hard ups menu, you can also go here and turn it on and off. You can see that at certain angles, like for example this one, it's extremely difficult to differentiate between these two surfaces. But when I'm going to add a you know, cavity, which kind of emulates a tiny bevel, like a micro bevel, you can clearly see this highlight. And these highlights are essential for us to read the form of an object or a model. And it's going to not only allow you to present your model in a better light, but also going to help you to model better because you're going to be seeing the design, the design language and the form much more clearly when you're going to be using bevels. And bevels are really, really important and it's also important how you use them. Now, there are two basic versions of bevels, okay? One of them is a chamfer, right? Which is a flat, kind of a flat bevel like this. You can have it at 45 degrees or so different angles, doesn't matter. And obviously you're going to bevel, okay? Which means it's a soft transition between two surfaces. Now, both of these can have different sizes. You can have tiny chamfers, tiny bevels, wide chamfers, wide bevels, angled chamfers, and so on and so forth. The way you use them is really important. It's kind of like a weapon. You need to know how to use these to create really good designs. It's really important you understand that you need to be consistent in design language, but also consistent with bevels, and bevels will determine the design language. For example, you can use a very tiny bevel, like on this image here, you can see that this model is very mechanical, it's kind of like machine-made, right? You can see all these, uh, all these tiny chamfers, all these tiny micro bevels, and it's going to sell this idea, this kind of a feel of a very hard object. But if you look, for example, at this bot, right, this is actually a render from our sub D course, which, by the way, you also can get on our website. Here you can see the design language is very different. It's very soft. So the bevels are very, very broad. Okay, they take a lot of space. They're kind of softer, wider. And even though you can tell that the uh, object is made of metal or hard plastic, you got this kind of a softer feel to it. So the model looks less intimidating, kind of more cute, you know and sort of more approachable. So you can sell a different feel of your model by using different types of bevels. Now let's talk about chamfers a little bit. Chamfers are fantastic because they're gonna create something that's called a, an angle shift or planar shift. So when I'm gonna add the chamfer here, you can see that um, this surface, this surface, and this surface are at different angles. So when I'm going to go to render view and I'm gonna apply some mod to it, okay, I'm gonna be using our add-on material works and by the way we have just recently updated this add-on and it works with decals and decal machine 
so you can run decals and trim sheets through our add-on and they look amazing so i really recommend you go to website and check it out but anyway what i want to talk about is um let me just get something more glossy okay you see that if i'm going to change the light to something different let me just find some good light oh, there we go you can clearly see that this surface is very bright this one is a bit darker but this one is really dark the color of the mat is the same the uh, brightness of the mat is the same nothing changes the same mat but it feels like the top is very very bright why the reason here is the angle uh, of the light falling on the surface and the angle shift changes between planes which is called planar shift and you got different reflections this is a very powerful tool for creating details so you can create details with bevels on your models by simply changing the angle which is going to reflect light differently and it's a very powerful tool because you can create details by simply changing the the shifting the planes or shifting the angles of the surface of your model so you don't really need to you know add intricate details to your model you can just do it with bevels and that's a really really good exercise to you know to try doing because it will teach you a lot about lighting and a lot about design so when i'll be creating a model like this now we'll just start playing with bevels here you know and start adding some really cool you know interesting shapes and on top of it at the micro bevel look how beautiful this looks how 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 an interesting detail that creates you know all these reflections and, and planar shifts this is going to you know kind of spice up your model and if you know how to use these tools you're gonna bring your model to another level so one of the key secrets of using bevels is to use different sizes of bevels if you're going to be using just one size it's going to look very monotonous okay you want to you want to introduce different um different sizes of bevels or chamfers on different elements to make them kind of stand out and also to draw attention to specific elements because you know look if i for example lower this bevel here to something really really tiny i mean just like that right so you get this tiny black you know rim around here but on top of this i would add um let me just turn on this edge i would add another chamfer on top of this here right i would need to um run a mark sharp in here to show you you see that we get this lip now okay you see what i mean and this adds another kind of a layer of interest to our design when you master how to use these you will really start creating some incredible shapes go on art station you know look at some really high-end design and pay specific attention to how people are using how these you know top artists are using bevels they use bevels and chamfers very very consciously it's nothing is accidental you know everything is is planned and they plan their designs by using bevels and chamfers Obviously, on top of it, you got some other details. But what I'm trying to say here that applying a blanket one size bevel to everything is not going to look like a professional model. So let's sum it up. Yeah, you want to use bevels to spice up your design language, but most importantly, to make it look realistic, to sell the feel of your model, right? Whether it's soft or hard or whatever. And to make it interesting. So you wanna kind of you know mix and match different sizes of bevels introduce some planar shifts to make it really kind of dynamic and interesting on the other hand you could use bevels and chamfers to make something look calm and sort of static when you're going to introduce the same size of bevels on most of the parts right so you have a very powerful weapon in the shape of two types of bevels which is going to be a fillet which is the round bevel and then you have a chamfer which is a flat one okay so now let's talk about some tips and tricks on how you can work smarter when you know you're working with bevels and chamfers so fillets and chamfers whatever you want to call them first of all i would use add-ons hard ups and box cutter and mesh machine are a must because they just are insane in terms of bevels now i'm gonna show you just a few tricks okay for example, when you want to create, let's say, a dynamic bevel on a mesh, you select the edge with a hard ups Q, Control, click on Mark, and then move your mouse and scroll. And you can uh, mirror this to the other side holding Shift, so to two sides. And now you got one bevel mirrored to four sides. And you can adjust it by simply pressing Q. On top of this, you can go to Q and click on 
hold control and click on bevel to add a secondary bevel, which is going to be this kind of a micro bevel, and I can control both of them. So you're going to go to uh, bevel and control this one and press Q and you can control these. This is really cool. Why this is cool? Well, let me show you this uh, on a different example. If I'm going to create a plane here and I'm going to extrude this, right? And I'm going to extrude it this way here on X axis and drop it down. And let's say I'm going to mirror this to the other side. Now, let's say I wanted to create some kind of a softer transition in here. So I'm going to add a bevel here. So I'm going to go to Q, Control Mark, and I'm going to create a bevel here. And I'm going to create one more here. And uh, let me just remove the um, remove this mirror for a second, and then create a bevel here. So that. And I'm going to add a mirror later on. There we go. Now let's just uh, um, auto smooth this. And now watch this. What I can do is, first of all, obviously manipulate with both bevels, right? So I'm going to press Q and I can just simply, you know, do that. This is really cool. But second thing, which is more important, is that you can change the shape of it. Because if this was just a regular bevel, okay? So I'm going to remove both bevels from here, right? And I had just a regular bevel here, so I'm going to, you know, apply a bevel here and apply a bevel here, right? When I'm going to try to change the shape, it's not going to work because it's going to do this, it's going to break, right? Because it's a hard-baked bevel. But in this case, what I can do, I can do whatever the hell I want with it and the bevel is going to follow, right? So I can change the shape of it, right? Keep adjusting it without, you know, without messing up the bevel, which could be a very interesting workflow, for example, for sub D or just even any hard surface with booleans. So that's a really powerful tool. Another thing you can do is you can add multiple bevels with hard ups. So for example, if I go to Q and add a bevel, and then I'm gonna, for example, run a, let's, let's add a larger bevel, okay? And I'm gonna add nine segments, okay? So we got this nice juicy bevel. If I'm gonna try to cut it with box cutter, obviously it's going to follow with the same bevel size. But what if I wanted to have a different size of a bevel for the cuts? You can do that with a tool that's called Step, for example, right? So go to Operations, click on Step, which is going to create a bevel half the size of, a diff of the previous bevel. And now when I'm going to be cutting this, you can see that uh, the bevel is tiny and, you know, it's of a different size. And now i got two bevels running on this mesh. So I can, again, adjust this bevel, right? But I can press Q and adjust this bevel. And you can keep stacking them. Obviously, there's a there's a limit to how far you can stack them, but you know this is really helpful because now I get tiny bevels on cuts. So again, you're introducing this kind of a dynamic feel or a dynamic feature of two different bevel sizes. This is really important. Okay. So now let's say you got some mesh here, you know, going this way, and then you're gonna you know let's say add a bevel here, and then you're gonna add a chamfer on top of this here, right? So let's run a chamfer. We're going to mirror this with Mesh Machine to the other side and run some micro bevel. What if I change my mind and now I wanted to remove this bevel from here, but it's just a part of the mesh? This would be an absolute headache to remove with vanilla blender and nearly impossible to maintain the you know perfect angling uh, or these you know these angles and, and the shifts between surfaces. But with Mesh Machine, you can select this one and simply um, unbevel, okay? And it's going to do this. And then you can simply change this to a different bevel. And, you know, um, Bob Jankel, you know, you don't have to worry too much about it. The same here, you can remove this entire chamfer, right? You can remove this, so you can unchamfer, or you can simply change the width of it, which is going to go to change width, you can do that. You can have other options here like T, uh, W, etc. So you have a lot of options with, with you know, Mesh Machine to work on bevels that are actually applied to your mesh. That's really powerful, especially when you're deeper in the model and you kind of came up with an interesting idea. I gotta go back, fix something. Just use, you know, use add-ons, be smart, okay? You can also change uh, change the uh, density of these bevels because if I select this one, go to Y with Mesh Machine, I can go to Refuse, which is gonna allow me to change the uh, both segments and also width of this bevel. So you got a lot of powerful tools with these add-ons. Like I told you also, you could use a bevel shader, but for this one, you need to be in cycles so you need to go here to cycles make sure you're in the cycles rendering engine and i'm going to be using our in-house add-on which is called 
material works and this add-on was recently updated to work with decals and trim sheets with a decal machine which looks absolutely insane and you can create some really cool stuff in blender that looks like it just came out of substance painter so i'm gonna add some mud to it let's say coated titanium and if i wanted to let me just change the lighting and if i wanted to add some procedural bevel on top of this i can do it here just simply clicking on bevel obviously you got other options here you can change samples you can uh to make it more defined you can change the width of it etc don't want to overdo this because you know it's a bevel shader it's a fake bevel which means it's just an illusion but for micro bevel uh, micro bevels which is this something that looks a bit like cavity or a bit fatter than cavity that is fantastic this bevel uh, shader is fantastic for situations when you're using uh, bullions on difficult uh, surfaces so for example if i had this you know um, bevel here and then i let's say wanted to cut it with a box cutter like this and create this kind of a cut right if i wanted to add a bevel on top of this i'm gonna have a disaster okay because eventually this this thing's gonna start breaking creating some really nasty shading problems etc but if you have just a surface you know without an actual bevel running on top of it you can run a bevel shader with maybe some uh, you know some loops here they're gonna be protecting and sort of isolating uh, this cut and you know you're good to go you don't have to worry about it uh, it's gonna look really clean so that's a solution for for example rendering so when you're just creating something you want to render you got a lot of details on that model and all you need is just a micro bevel just use bevel shader and you're good to go okay so these would be my tips for working with bevels and or fillets and chamfers whatever you want to call them I just call them bevels and chamfers, but technically bevel is, you know, it's chamfers and fillets. But anyway, hope it helps you out. Hope these tips gonna, you know, uh, sort some issues you may be having and help you to create some better models. Like I said in the beginning, if you're a beginner and you are struggling with Blender, even if you're intermediate, go ahead and check our course. It's fantastic, the Hard Surface Accelerator. And like I told you, if you're gonna click on the link in the description, go to website, you're gonna get 40% off which is really crazy and you're gonna get a ton of value for your money. So see you inside. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.